Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of Leona, Pennsylvania. Today we're doing something a little bit different. Um, well, we're in a John Deere 9700. I want to say 9700i, but apparently they're not made in America. Uh, well, I shouldn't say that. I forget the reason why they put an I on it. Uh, 900 series are no longer I series. The 800 series, I think, still come with an I. Um, someone will have to correct me on that. But yeah. Um, so far, loving the machine. Um, Harvest Labs, one of my favorite things on this machine. I, I definitely like looking at that, all the data you can collect. This is our second field. We had one over the mountain there um, that we had to go do. And I gave that as a trial run. We had a uh, Meyer 24 foot box with us um, that I was putting on our Massey. Might end up putting that on a boxcar Magnum and trying that out eventually. Um, I kind of want something with a side discharge. Or our one one or two silos that we still fill with uh, CCM and uh, so really kind of a, a necessity something with a side load the east end dump does have a rear door uh, I don't like filling out of the east end dump so I don't know we'll see you've got two grass fields to cut on this field we may have a third yeah you know, third uh, corn corn field to cut but I haven't quite figured that out yet um, Yeah, doing well. I am really impressed with this machine. We are running a uh, 10 row uh, small drum header. I actually prefer the big drum, honestly. This is it's a good head for sure. Not definitely not bad. I wouldn't say that, but I like our, our big drum headers a little bit more. Um, I feel like there's a lot more moving parts when you have several different drums compared to just one larger drum. I guess really three or four larger drums over six or seven small drums. And yeah, uh, other than that, this machine is really a big improvement over our machine. Um, I don't know if it necessarily convinced me to go to Deer as much as I, I really do like this machine. The price tag is concerning for sure. It would definitely have to be something I would consider when looking at another machine. Um, other than that, I would like to try this in corn, um, just doing. I forget what it's called, I guess, Glee Earlidge, I want to say. And, um, like to say how it does an Earlidge, we don't have a very, a real new Earlidge header, just an old six row deer that we adapted to our class machine. And I'm wondering if we can, once again, ad adapt it to this machine. Um, not quite sure yet. I'd like to try, but more than likely it's not going to happen, fortunately. Um, I am kind of regretting the amount of corn ground I had this year. I could have done it with a little bit more, I think. Uh, next year, I think we're going to be making some changes and probably picking up some land more than anything, along with maybe some new equipment here soon enough. I'm going to go ahead and tell him to come around. I'm going to be right back, guys. All right, guys, we're back. Um, I actually had to run and take a load to the uh, pit. Didn't realize the truck was that full, but I went ahead and sent them on their way and got them kind of over there on our left. Be good to go. Um, this, this field is yielding really well. I'm quite shocked by how well the yield is for how poor I did on the uh, fertilization for this field, but good. And uh, we'll get it knocked out. Um, field is going fast for sure. I know we don't have necessarily the largest fields, but this is one of our larger fields here, and going well. I'm really enjoying it. Gene is definitely a uh, game changer. I don't know if it's necessarily our game changer, but it is a game changer for sure. Um, I definitely would not mind getting into one of these. Um, this is a, as I said, a 9700 series uh, gear chopper, and has the 24 liter LeBaire engine and not the um, not the new 18 liter that comes in the uh, newer newer ones. This is just a demo unit. I think this is like not necessarily the first year production, but maybe the second year, 2021. I think um, it's a good machine. Uh, I would definitely definitely suggest anyone who wants to to try one of these out. Um, our local dealer set us up, and I'm sure anyone else's would be more than willing to show them, let them have a try at it. Down here. 
yeah, this, this machine is really nice. I like the 10 row. Um, I would like a big drum, probably 12 row, honestly, a little bit more. And we may eventually have to try one of them, but as of right now, this does the job. I believe these, uh, these uh, small drums are made by Kemper. It's always been a good company here. Um, I'm not going to say anything ill about Kemper. I think they make a good head. A lot of different companies use them. So I don't think there's anything bad to really say, but... Other than that, the machine handles well. I am going at about uh, 6 miles an hour here, 7 miles an hour. Perfectly fine for me. Uh, um, plenty of speed. And the machine's just humming along. I don't, I don't hear anything. It's not struggling for power, which is kind of an issue with our own machine. Um, depending on the corn, it struggles, even though it's a uh, 50 series or a 9000 series. 9,900 series. There's too many numbers, guys. Too many numbers. Too many different brands and machines with all their own sets of numbers. It's crazy. But overall, this machine's doing great. I'm really impressed by it. I don't think I don't know if the price tag justifies the, uh, the machine, but I would not say no to a free one. <laughs> I don't think anyone would say they know to anything free generally yeah it's beautiful today here in the valley it's about nine o'clock now and uh just love that view there watching seeing as the uh, the valley there just keeps rising and our driver there is standing right with us which i'm real happy with keeping up um i was worried that truck would sink down um we've been getting a little bit of rain as of lately and i'm worried about that thinking about putting some um Super singles on it and seeing how it does with them, but they end up on staying on the ground pretty well. Um, the trailer hasn't started to sink either. I may uh, may eventually uh, look into getting a, like a high dump trailer, Oxbow or Jiffy or something, and uh, fill in for that machine, that truck, and uh, save us a little bit of time when it gets wet. I know Oxbow is a pretty pretty big company here in uh, Pennsylvania. I wouldn't say huge. They're more for uh, vegetable farming and things like that. But I don't think it would be too hard to get my hands on one of them. I'd love to give them a try, especially in our wetter years. This year has been fairly dry, unfortunately. Why you'll see a lot of weeds in our crops this year. Unfortunately, uh, we didn't get that moisture in the ground to activate a lot of our chemical. So it, it's just not been that great. Well, you want to stutter there. She... We got a nice big wad of corn apparently and wasn't happy about it. I'm glad the side just coming out that nice green color. I know I'm getting a little late to get into this. Uh, about mid October currently. Uh, I was worried about it. Worried how this uh, corn would turn out, but overall doing great. Real happy with it. Yeah, um, I'm not quite sure what else there is to say. Um, I may cut back to when we're into the grass silage, or I may just shut up and let you guys watch me harvest here. Uh, as far as what is next, the next episode, oh. Uh, I'll be right back. I'm going to go ahead and send them on their way. Hey guys, we're back. Um, still going ahead and chopping away. Went ahead and delivered in that next load. He says, pit's getting pretty full. We're uh, filling our smallest pit. Um, not even attached to the main kind of silo complex or pit complex, if you guys remember. It's um, probably our fist pit, first pit we ever put together. Um, first pit we ever poured. And that is across the little stream that runs through the farm. And we're, we're just filling that one. We're not planning on using this corn silage a whole lot. We've got plenty of it from... Uh, regular season this is just uh, corn silage we're testing with this machine um, we're not expecting it to be high in uh, value for the cattle but I wanted something to run through this machine and something to test figured I would go ahead and use this field as a test field and then we will probably hop back over and take off this head return this head to the dealer um, I'm not gonna be using it and I'm gonna go ahead and pick up a, uh, a pickup head, and we're gonna get to work on that field. And we've got one more field at the top of the hill there that I never got to, mainly because I didn't know how much uh, grass hay 
or how much haylage I was going to go through. And let me tell you, a lot more than I thought. Um, you guys have seen the feeding videos early in the day here, and we're going through quite a bit of hay haylage every day. More than I ever thought, which is really unfortunate and kind of sucks, but is the way that it is. And I'm going to try and make some more up to make up for it. I'm going to go ahead and probably put one more lap around this field in, and we'll go ahead and cut up the mill. Means we got at least one more truck full here, maybe two or three. We'll have to see. This field definitely goes quick. I forget how uh, how quick it goes. It's a lot of up and down. Not much, uh, not very wide. Very long, but it's not wide at all. Like most of our fields. I don't necessarily consider this one a contour field. It's really river bottom ground, considering the river is right down there. But, uh, or, or I don't even know if I call it a river. It's just a little stream. It runs through. The owner here uh, runs through the town and kind of into the hills again. But, it, River Bottom is probably our best ground here. Definitely has the highest value, for sure. Then back around. Um, one thing I do want to one thing you guys can do for me is let me know if the uh, if my mic sounds better or if the video sounds better. I'm trying a couple new settings, and I'm hoping that we can get some of that background noise to kind of bleed out. Um, I've done a little bit of testing on my own. So far, it sounds like it's doing better. You guys will definitely have to let me know. What are we doing? Come on, put it in gear. You can do better than that. Alright. But yeah, um, let me know about those new settings. Uh, went ahead and did a couple things on my phone. Or I guess, really on the GoPro. But, you know, did a couple things. Try to get those new settings set up and for the volume and the wind noise isn't picked up so much. So hopefully that helps out a lot. I know the quality of the videos, at least to me, don't seem as seem where I want them to be. Uh, like the HD quality is great, but the uh, actual sound quality has been just mediocre at best. And uh, let me know if I need to turn up the vehicle volume or anything. I always think I'm a little bit low compared to it. But uh, I don't know. You'll have to you'll have to let me know, guys. Um, other than that, I should, everything should be pretty good. I think, uh, I think the editing software I use is pretty good, um, the greatest. I think I could do some more editing to the videos for sure. Similar to what the channel does with like cinematic video videos and things like that. I know H puts a lot more work into those for cinematography type stuff. But uh, this series, I don't know if it's necessary. If he wants me to, I could, but we'll see. Um, I may do some harvest videos with some drone footage eventually. Though, with our field, it's very hard to get anything substantial in terms of harvest videos because our, our contours are so small. There's not a lot there to actually film around. Maybe we'll do one for soybean harvest. We'll see. Going up nice again. I am really impressed with the tonnage. I don't know if it's... Fun. What is wrong with you? Must be a tough spot there. I don't know if there's just where I'd maybe dump the fertilizer out. I don't know. Because every, every time we get there, that copper just kind of hesitates for some reason. But yeah, I am impressed by the 24 uh, liter LeBaire engine. I, uh, I am concerned if I were to buy one of these machines on parts. I'm not sure how parts uh, would go in terms of the engine. I'm not sure if belts and things like that are easily accessible, or if it's mainly the actual components of the engine, not so much the wearable parts that are hard to come by. Getting full. I'm going to go ahead and send him on his way. And now uh, I'll bring you guys back once more uh, when he's back. Hey guys, we're back. One more time. Um, well. One more load to the pit so far, and we're uh, we're back going. Um, I definitely need to go ahead and bring the old one of the old trucks out, or hook another track up track trip to the Meyer wagon. Um, haven't done either. 
but really just a short drive from the farm anyway. And kind of want to test the livability of this thing. I'm supposedly going to be spending, you know, almost a month in this machine anyway, if not two or three months out of the year in this machine, and I'll be waiting on trucks anyway, so may as well wait now and figure out if I actually do like the uh, comfort, which I will say this machine is extremely comfortable, which I expect no less from Deere, honestly. Of any manufacturer, I would assume they would have some of the nicest seats and some of the nicest machines. Though I am surprised this machine came with cloth seats instead of leather seats, but, you know, can't have everything. Maybe that's only an option on the uh, the other two, the 800 and the 900. I would sure hope if I'm buying a 900 series chopper I would get leather seats. You never know. You never, never know. Yep, yeah, and really, I love this field, guys. I love the way it just looks over the farm and looks over the valley. Now you can see the other, both sides of the valley from this field, which is awesome for sure. And uh, that field there is also really nice because you overlook the river from a top, from on top of it almost. It's, there's a bank down to the river there. It's really awesome. But yeah, other than that, this uh, this machine is great and handles well. Eats corn, absolutely eats corn like crazy. Can't believe how uh, quick it is to knock acres out with it. Um, I still am not a fan of the the ten the uh, ten row small drum. I like to try a big drum eventually, but I don't know. Depends on the price difference, really. And this machine just sings along. I'm really impressed by that. However, the one thing I have noticed is they still use the old. Uh, old joystick there. You guys haven't noticed that. Even in a 900 series chopper. I would have sworn that would be a uh, the new stick. I, what do they call it? Like the Command Pro or something? Command Pro Arm? I don't remember. One of the new, new uh, arm that's black with a little bit of orange instead of that one. Which I, I like the look of that arm, but the new one's probably way more ergonomic. Puts the hand grip a little bit better. Ooh. Uh, I'll be right back, guys. All right, guys. Driver apparently jumped out. Uh, wasn't even looking. Driver jumped out. Um, one of the lines there in the back had popped out. So I went ahead and just real quickly helped him throw that back in, and we're we're back going. Hopefully, they uh, that didn't happen again. I'm wondering if the corner we took down there was a little too sharp. Yeah, pulled it right out the socket. We'll see. Um, Probably gonna do it again anyway. Go. Pick up. Over here. Now that there is uh, Leona beef, I believe. They, they also do a little bit of milk processing too. We take most of our milk there actually. Um, f good for local. Uh, people buy sell local there. They hold a outdoor uh, flea market type thing or outdoor farmers market. Uh, every, I believe, every Saturday, which is real interesting to see, and love going there and seeing that. So they hold it there underneath those trees, and people bring in picnic tables and all that. Really, just a nice get together. Um, I can't remember if that's every other week or if it's every week, but that is again. That's just during the summer. It's not a uh, a big a big thing during the winter, of course. But during the winter, they usually just sell. Uh, milk products, dairy products generally, and beef beef and meats and pork and all that good stuff. So, really an interesting place and we love taking our uh, our produce there rather than selling uh, direct to uh, larger corporations. Never always. Uh, I like, like the idea of selling to a larger corporation. Selling local, keeping it local is really a big thing for me. I don't know. I know some people will Certainly argue about that, how selling to a larger corporation has its benefits, but I don't know. Generally, they come and pick it up. They got a truck that they come and pick up the milk, and they uh, they haul it for us. Don't have to do a whole lot there. Just produce milk and sell it to them, and we get a we get a decent price. They're not they're not paying us way higher than any corporate entity would, and they're not paying us way lower than any corporate entity. Would so 
I, I don't see the loss or the benefit of selling to a, uh, a big corporation if I can sell local and keep it local. Alright guys, I'm going to go ahead and pause again let them go ahead and go. Hey guys, we're back. Um, it is almost full, unfortunately. Uh, yeah, well, I guess fortunately. Alan, uh, Alan said the pit is darn near full. Um, says our tractor is, with the blade on, is nearly struggling to get up because the blade is getting in the way of him actually being able to push, push up the pile. So, he's kind of having to load one side rather heavily because that's, uh, that's a pile that you can enter from two sides. And, uh, yeah, good to hear, but it's uh, definitely concerning considering I was not planning on having to possibly fill another pit. Uh, I might end up just mixing the uh, silage maize forage with uh, grass forage over there if I have to. Calling it good. Which is not a bad thing. We've got one smaller pit that we can still fill and then we'll have our two largest pits left for first and second cutting for next year. And that'll be just perfect I think we can pick up some more ground. I want to definitely plant a lot more silage next year. And that that's my big goal really is pick up a field or two more. And Alan says a Alan what does he say? Oh he's gonna need some fuel here eventually. Starting to run out, unfortunately. Oh we gotta do that too. That truck holds I don't remember how much that truck holds. Quite a bit. Not a lot, not a, a lot in comparison to newer machines, but holds quite a bit, so it cost a good uh, couple bucks, fortunately. And uh, other than that, it'd be pretty good. We've got what, two more rows. Hopefully, four ups and downs. Around, yeah, just one more up and down. Two more. More rows left to do in this field, and then I'll, uh, then in this, uh, I'll be taking this back. I'll just drive this back to the dealership. The dealership's only a couple miles away, maybe 30 minutes at most, and I'll go pick up the uh, pick up the grass pickup head for this machine. And after that, we should be well and truly done for the year. Corn silage. We'll have some uh, earwitch to do, and I might bring you guys back for that one. The next episode, we'll be doing some village maybe. And then after that, it'll be... Maybe I'll bring you for some, uh, some poverty grass planting, eating. We are... I've already gone ahead and start. I guess I should say, I've already started on eating wheat for the year. That's uh, over half. We've got one or two more big fields. I may put this uh, this field here to wheat. I haven't decided like to produce more straw next year. We definitely didn't have enough with the oats. And I may, I don't, I haven't decided if I'm doing more oats. I might do wheat and then switch to oats every year, depending on the uh, crop, how it does. Oats was really meant to be a cover crop. Didn't get to it soon enough and ended up taking it off for straw. They're desperate for it. Oh, are we gonna be able to take that? Oh yeah. Mm. Barely. We barely fit, guys. Yeah. We're gonna have to pick a row. We're gonna have to pick, pick on that side. Yeah, this, this crop did really well. I'm shocked how well it's done. I do have uh, additive in, which may be helping with our uh, tonnage. This isn't this isn't silage corn. This is the thing that shocks me. Is this isn't our usual growing season silage corn. This is meant to be great um, corn you put in a bin never meaning to chop this it is really shocking with how well it's yielding something I didn't quite get to quite weedy yeah and my truck is looking like it's going to need a respray see all the paint chipping off of it Box. And a lot of people would probably say our uh, 7 series, 7,000 series Magnum, they also need a respray. I would agree. If you guys have looked at that at all in videos, 
getting pretty worn down. Uh, they end up taking that truck in in the uh, in the old uh, you know. Film. God, what, why can't I think of that now? Oh, the old boxcar magnet. I am lost, guys. I'm a bit tired here. Been a long day. We started at about four o'clock, and we've been going. All right, guys. We're gonna tell Alan to go ahead and take it. I'll see you guys here. In a second. Hey, guys. We're back for one last, uh, one last little clip here. Um. Now, apparently we filled the bunk, uh, 300,000 liters, stuffed into that little bunk there, pretty well. Uh, Jimmy said he was only filling from one end. It has a two-end two -end bunker, you can drive in from either side. He said he was dumping from one end, driving all the way through, and then having to reverse out, from the sounds of it, or uh, not reverse out, but he was reversing in and driving, driving out. Creating a pile on one end just so we could stack it a little bit higher so that the blade, uh, the blade would actually clear when the tractor came up onto the uh, pit. Which, uh, which sucks that we can't fill it all the way, but it's uh, full enough to where I think we got our money's worth out of it. <laughs> yeah, which is good. And I'm real impressed by this machine. I will likely have a video of us doing hay with it as well here soon enough. Oh. Yeah, I'm gonna likely set you guys on uh, Jimmy's, Jimmy Allen, whichever one those two are. I can't remember who's in there. I've had a long day, guys, but one of those two. Uh, they may be switching for each other. I know one of them's in the uh, packing tractor, one's in the truck here. So, uh, yeah, one of those guys is gonna take you and take you up to the farm and let you see. Uh, but the pit's like, I uh, hear those two, a couple others who were there, uh, mainly family, has gone ahead and covered the pit. That's good. Likely going to stick with him. I haven't quite said it yet. More than likely. We'll see. In here, we got a little bit squirrely. It's a little muddy right here. I can't. Oh. We're gonna come over here, pick this up. Okay. Yeah, this field went nice and quick. Real impressed with it. I do wish I would have probably actually cut it for regular corn. I would have gotten pretty good yield off it, I think. All things considering. Our last little pass. Super excited for this. Now we going for I don't think so. Love to know the hour meter on my what we put on it so far. But I don't see it. Using about four hundred liters an hour. Oh so like twenty or thirty. 30 gallons per hour? Quite sure. I think that's probably what that metric conversion converts out, of, out to. But you never know. Uh, so nice. Oh man. Feels great, guys. Be done with corn silage. Except that we've got more grass silage to do. I uh, definitely was not planning on having any more of this to do, but. But that's good. It means just more feed. It means hopefully we can keep some in reserve for next year. Things go bad. Always my concern is try and make enough for two years and hopefully have one good year and one bad year and not be struggling so much. But you never know. Some years you get two, two terrible years in a row and some years you get three good years and all kind of even, evens out. This up here. 
I'll be off. Off the machine and go ahead and hop out here. Show you what we got. So this is a 700. And we're ahead. Nice big machine. I can't believe the size of it in there. And our uh, old Mac here. Yeah. Right axle uh, then dump. I'm considering trading off for just a twin axle. I haven't quite decided that yet. Yeah, thanks guys for watching. In large H. And I think next time you can board the sands a silage. Along with some privilege. Also possibly in the next episode or the episode after. And we're gonna get into actual harvest. I'm quite busy here. I'll see you guys later.